Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2023. I am your messenger of the word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Genesis 43 through 45 and Matthew 12, 24 through 50. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. The Second Journey to Egypt, Genesis 43 Now the famine was still severe in the land, and so they had eaten all the grain they had brought from Egypt. Their father said to them, Go back and buy us a little more food. But Judea said to him, The man warned us solemnly, you will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother along with us, we will go down and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. Because the man said to us, You will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. Israel asked, Why did you bring this trouble on me? by telling the man you had another brother. They replied, The man questioned us closely about ourselves and our family. Is your father still living? He asked us. Do you have another brother? We simply answered his question. How did we know that he would say, Bring your brother down here? Then Judea said to Israel, his father, Send the boy along with me. And we will go at once, so that we and all our children may live and not die. I myself will guarantee his safety. You can hold me personally responsible for him if I do not bring him back to you and set him here before you. I will bear the blame before you all my life. As it is, if we had not delayed, we could have gone and returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be, then do this. Put some of the best products of the land in your bags and take them down to the man as a gift. A little balm and a little honey, some spices and myrrh, some pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double the amount of silver with you, for you must return the silver that was put back into the mouths of your sacks. Perhaps it was a mistake. Take your brother also and go back to the man at once. And may God Almighty grant you mercies before the man so that he will let your other brother and Benjamin come back with you. As for me, I, if I am bereaved, I am bereaved. And so the men took the gifts and doubled the silver and Benjamin also. They hurried down to Egypt and presented themselves to Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Take these men to my house, slaughter an animal, and prepare a meal. They are to eat with me at noon. Well, the man did as Joseph told him and took the men to Joseph's house. Now the men were frightened when they were taken to his house. They thought, We were brought here because of the silver that was put back into our sacks the first time, and he wants to attack us and overpower us and seize us and is, use us as slaves and take our donkeys. So they went up to Joseph's steward, and they spoke to him, and the entrance uh, to his house. We beg your pardon, our Lord, they said. We came down here the first time to buy food, but at the place where we stopped for the night, we opened our sacks, and each of us found his silver, the exact weight in the mouth of his sack. And so we have brought it back with us. We have also brought additional silver with us to buy food. We don't know who put our silver in our sacks. 
It's all right, he said. Don't be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, has given you treasures in your sacks. I received your silver. Then he brought Simon out to them. The steward took the men into Joseph's house and gave them water to wash their feet and provided fodder for their donkeys. They prepared their gifts for Joseph's arrival at noon because they heard that they were to eat there. Now when Joseph came home, they presented to him the gifts that they had brought into the house and they bowed down before him to the ground. He asked them how they were, and then he said, How is your aged father you, you had told me about? Is he still living? They replied, Your servant, our father, is still alive and well. And they bowed down, prostrating themselves before him. As he looked about and saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son, he asked, Is this your younger brother, the one that you had told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Deeply moved at the sight of his brother, Joseph hurried out, and he looked for a place to weep. He went into his private room, and he wept there. After he had washed his face, he came out and, controlling himself, said, serve the food now they served him by himself the brothers by themselves and the egyptians who ate with him by themselves because egyptians could not eat with hebrews for that is detestable to egyptians then the men had been seated before him in the order of their ages from the firstborn to the youngest, and they looked at each other in astonishment. And when portions were served to them from Joseph's table, Benjamin's portion was five times as much as anyone else's. So they feasted, and they drank freely with him. A Silver Cup in a Sack Genesis 44 Now Joseph gave these instructions to the steward of his house fill them in sacks with as much food as they can carry and put each man's silver in the mouth of his sack then put my cup the silver one in the mouth of the youngest one's sack along with the silver from uh, for his brain and he did as joseph said as morning dawned the men were sent on their way with their donkeys they had not gone far from the city when Joseph said to the steward, Go after those men at once, and when you catch up with them, say to them, Why have you repaid good with evil? Isn't this the cup my master drinks from, and also uses for dimension? This is a wicked thing that you have done. And when he caught up with them, he repeated, these words to them but they said to him why does my lord say such things far be it from your servants to do anything like that we even brought back to you from the land of king the silver we found inside the mouths of our sacks so why would we steal silver or gold from your master's house if any of your servants is found to have it, he will die, and the rest of us will become my lord's slaves. Very well then, he said, let it be as you say. Whoever is found to have it will become my slave. The rest of you will be free from blame. So each of them quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and they opened it, and then the steward proceeded to search beginning with the oldest and ending with the youngest and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack and at this they tore their clothes then they all loaded their donkeys and returned to the city Joseph was still in the house 
when Judea and his brothers came in, and they threw themselves to the ground before him. Joseph said to them, What is this that you have done? Do you know that a man like me can find things out by dimension? What can we say to my Lord? Judea replied, What can we say? How can we prove our innocence? God has uncovered your servant's guilt. We are now my Lord's slaves, we ourselves, and the one who was found to have the cup. But Joseph said, Far be it from me to do such a thing. Only the man who was found to have the cup will become my slave. The rest of you go back to your father in peace. Then Judea went up to him and said, Pardon your servant, my lord. Let me speak a word to my lord. Do not be angry with your servant, though you are equal to Pharaoh himself. My lord asked his servants, Do you have a father or a brother? And we answered, And we have an aged father, and there is a young son born to his and to him in his old age. His brother is dead, and he is the only one of his mother's sons left, and his father loves him dearly. Then you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, so I can see him for myself. And we said to my lord, The boy cannot leave his father. If he leaves him, his father will die. But you told your servants, unless your younger brother comes down with you, you will not see my face again. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him what my Lord had said. And then our father said, Go back and buy a little more food. But we said we cannot go down. Only if our youngest brother is with us, we will go down. We cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. One of them went away from me, and I said, He has surely been torn to pieces, and I have not seen him since. If you take this one from me too, and harm comes to him, you will bring my gray head down to the grave in misery. So now, if the boy is not with us, when I go back to your servant, my father, and if my father, whose life is closely bound up with the boy's life, sees that the boy isn't there, he will die. Your servants will bring the gray head of our father down to the grave in sorrow. Your servant guaranteed the boy's safety to my father. I said, if I do not bring him back to you, I will bear the blame before you, my father, and all my life. Now then, please, let your servants remain here as my lord's slaves, as in place of the boy, and let the boy return with his brothers. How can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? No, do not let me. See the misery that would come on my father. Joseph makes himself known. Genesis 45 Then Joseph could, can, could bear it no longer. He could not control himself. Before all his attendants, he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph, and when he made himself known to his brothers, and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him, because they were terrified at his pre presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold to me, into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed, and do not be angry with yourselves, 
for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to slay and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen, and be near me, you, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds, and all you have. I will provide for you there, because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can send, I mean, you can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor according, accorded, accorded me in Egypt, and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. And then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin, and he wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping, and he kissed, kissed all his brothers, and wept over them. Afterwards his brothers talked with him. When the news reached Pharaoh's palace that Joseph's brothers had come, Pharaoh and all his officials were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, do this. Load your animals, and return to the land of Canaan, and bring your father and your families back to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you can enjoy the fat of the land. You are also directed to tell them, do this. Take some carts from Egypt for your children and your wives, and get your father and come. Never mind about your belongings, because the best of all Egypt will be yours. The sons of, the, of Israel did this. Joseph gave them carts, and Pharaoh had, as Pharaoh had commanded, and he also gave them provisions for their journey. To each of them he gave new clothes, but to Benjamin he gave the three hundred shekels of silver and five sets of clothes. And this is what he sent to his father. Ten donkeys loaded with the best things of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and other provisions for his journey. And then he sent his brothers away, and as they were leaving, he said to them, Don't quarrel on the way. And so they went up on out of Egypt, and they came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. They told him, Joseph is still alive. In fact, he is ruling over all of Egypt. Jacob was stunned, and he did not believe them. But when they told him everything Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the carts Joseph had sent to carry him back, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. And Israel said, I am convinced. My son Joseph is alive. I will be go and see him before I die. And that was Genesis 43 through 45. Now we will be turning to Matthew 12, 24. Okay, Matthew 12, 24. But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is uh, it is only by Beelzebub, the prince of the demons, that this fellow drives out demons. 
and Jesus knew their thoughts, and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? If I drive out demons by Beelzebub, but whom do you people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has become has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you, who are evil, say anything good? For the mouths speak with what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your wounds you will be commanded. The Sign of Jonah Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the Lord law said, to him, Teacher, we went to see a sign. We want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given. It none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days in the and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The man of Nivea will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom and now something greater than Solomon is here when an impure spirit comes out of a person it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it then it says I will return to the house I left when it arrives, it finds the house empty. Unoccupied and swept clean and put in order. And then it goes in and it takes with it seven other spirits more wickeder than itself. And they go in and they live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. Jesus' mother and brothers. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. 
he replied to him, Who is my mother, and who is, are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And that was Matthew twelve twenty four through 50, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2023 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Genesis 46 through 48 and Matthew 13, 1 through 30. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. And so I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2023 for today. I shouldn't adore Briscoe. Have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you. And so do I. So come back tomorrow and see us because, well, God willing, we'll be here. And we hope that you are too.